Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen. <laughs> um, that was James. Hi James. Hi. We're, I did the thing. If you're smart, you can go through a number of the different episodes of games that you're playing and work out <laughs> what day I was here on. Yeah, except for my terrible upload schedule. Here's another portal. It's good to know. I did slightly better this time. Slightly more efficient use of my resources, and it only took me a couple of minutes to get back. But I wasn't on camera, so there was no pressure. So you watched. You, you didn't see my awesome mad skills of getting there. You, but you've seen my awesome terrible skills of fucking up in the first place, which is the entertaining one. Now I'm pretty sure there's other stuff around here. And this time you have safe. judicious. Is that a drop? It's hard to tell. Oh yeah, it's very drop. <laughs> I'm slightly spoiling this myself as well because I haven't watched up to the latest episode. I was talking in said latest episode about the volumetric fog or the not volumetric fog of Dark Mirror. <laughs> but it's only horizontal fog, it only goes in the same direction as the engine. Meaning that you never actually. Oh, I thought that was a thing and I couldn't stand it. <laughs> I honestly thought that I could jump on that, but in fact it turned out that I couldn't. Um, it was just a big drop. There's no, there's no depth to the lighting, so mm -hmm. every sector has complete light all the way down. Which you'd think is something that you could address in the OpenGL version, but I guess they haven't. Can you imagine doing this without maps look? Well, yeah, I used to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fudge! There's a certain deceleration on your movements as well, which always gets me, and I'm clicking to respawn and then firing as a result of it. What are you trying to achieve here? I'm trying to see if I can get over there. Why? Because I'm pretty sure there's something over there. Also, I want to pick up this Mr. Curtain in every time I try. See how there's a... No, there isn't. <laughs> Works the same to me. Okay, let's just go to the place we were. <laughs> <laughs> this is even harder than the... The, um... Ice bit. With the Wendigos. Where's my Mystic going gone? That's all I'm here Oh, when'd he go? Whenever he felt like it. See this? I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. Ooh, that's interesting. That helps. It really helps. Don't squish me, though. Don't squish me, bro. <laughs> Don't squish me, bro. Holy crap. That just fixes the floor. It's handy. So, in the previous episode, which you haven't seen yet, I was going on about the suspension of disbelief <laughs> and how it seems quite unlikely that certain things would be the case. Why would there be a switch that undoes an earthquake? It's like we, exactly. um, when we had a quick out the Commander Keen thing that you had. Like, here's just a room full of blocks for no apparent reason. What's going on? In old games, they didn't really have to justify. Okay, so this is any where the trap started. Like this is not, you know, I've put this back. This is not a castle that someone's living in. This is not. Yeah. This is not a facility. This is not designed for use. This is a video game level and nothing else. That's right. But... <laughs> this is of an era where they were exploring with the... I mean, even with Doom, they, they named the levels. It's not like it was just, here's a place to deal with it. You know, the, the levels had actual names. I picked up this mana because I'm scared. Yeah, I mean, they're named, like, they have levels like and they have names, like you say, but they're not conforming to... It's not like Half-Life. Like, you know, this is a lab and it actually looks like a lab. And it makes sense That's as a, a facility. But I think the thing is that they were trying to do that. If they could have, if they had the... You could call the thing whatever you want. You could call this place Butler's. It's a holiday resort. Caves of Sus. But it's caves, right? You, you go into it when you, in a minute, we'll see how much more cavey it is than we're currently on, but why are you fitting in there? Can we talk about this? <laughs> it's pretty sure that that's... Like in modern games, for example, you wouldn't go... Well, you would literally go, I'm safe if I run through here, that thing can't chase me. Chase me? Don't like it. I don't need that flush yet, because they suck as the cleric. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> That's another one of those scripted things that was never before done. I think there's a particle in it. Just use all your mana, you don't need it. You've got green mana now. Well, suddenly it's cavey, but you see, these things imply 
artifice. So I mean, these are definitely doors that somebody has created on purpose. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't use the textures that they use and the. Like that's the thing. Like, if someone did this on purpose, then they're a, a very poor architect. Because, you know, you'd move in and be like. Alright, I want to go to bed. There's three elevators, four switches, and a fire pit in the way. Yeah. But you have to imagine that the designers of the game were going for something when they chose to use the iconology that they did choose. Like, if they didn't want me to believe that that thing that we came through was a door that was intended to open, they wouldn't have put something that looked like a smoothed wall. It wouldn't look like a door that had been tended to open. You didn't have to use that texture, you could just use more rock textures. Yeah. And I would have gone, this is just a cave in the caves. So obviously they intended for me to go... Yeah, I'm not saying there's not design at work here. But I just mean it's not like... Yeah, it is. I mean, hell, even you think of like Wolfenstein. That was, you know, this is a jail cell, this is... That, but it, it didn't necessarily have to make sense. Yeah, there's, a, the there's always an arcadey element. To do. I'm going to consider it the arcadey element, where yeah. these games are designed to be played before they're designed to be understood. Yeah, yeah, it's a good way. Of Which is not something we really do these days, because we have the the time, the resources to put put all the energy into doing both. But I, I guess at this time of history, as it were. Um, we, especially video game history, video games were not nearly the massive industry that they are now. No. So that works out here now. Well, well it's expectations as well. Like back in the day, you wouldn't expect a video game to make sense as if it was a real world location. Yeah. You know, this is a video game. I can certainly suspend a lot more disbelief for a game of this age. I'm not going through it going, what the hell am I doing here? Except when I realise that I'm not going through it having those thoughts, then I start having those thoughts to try and apply them and see how things change. Yeah. So it's more of an exercise in... It's that weird thing where actually if this had modern graphics, where if this, if this looked like the latest Call of Duty or whatever, mm. then but had the exact same layout and stuff, you'd look at it and go, fuck, <laughs> this doesn't make sense as a location. Because you kind of understand due to the limitations of the time, okay, they couldn't make this look like this, this place. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, you don't even question the fact that all these have flat floors, but they have to. Or even things like the fact that items are just floating in the middle of the floor, instead of, you know, they're now, they're now in crates or in drawers. You know, you find a health kit in a health cabinet on the wall in a bathroom. Yeah. Where you expect a health cabinet to be, rather than this is a health item just floating in the middle of the floor. But even these days, we we play with that slider of disbelief. In that, um, for a game like Unreal Tournament, for example, we do just have health items on the floor. We do have weapons that bob up and down and float because you have to be able to see them in the pace of the game. Yeah. Again, that's slightly different. That's, that's, you know, Honor of Tournament is a... Yeah, it's a deathmatch tournament game, yeah. not a live-like game. But at the same time, the artificially constructed maps that are the arenas in something like Unreal Tournament still have a more believable layer over them. Because we have the resources to spend on just decoration and, you know, just visual interest which creates worlds that, although have obvious artificial design because you're trying to make an interesting level with good Z-axis work, still have sufficient, you know, extra stuff in them to make you go, oh, I see what this is. Even in UT-99, you know, you could create these really tall um, <laughs> car parks that came out of the Earth's atmosphere and had low gravity. And you go, I see what this is. I have no idea why it would be built in any situation. But it still seems like we're playing a deathmatch in a pre-existing universe. Yeah. Rather than in an arena specifically designed but to... But even, okay. like these days, even... Um, you know, if they have an arena deathmatch game, they make it a literal arena. 
So the level itself might be a bunch of floating platforms and things, but it's confined within the context of the stadium. Yeah. That then becomes a real place. But that's also true of Unreal Tournament. I mean, why would there be an asteroid with two towers on it if not to be a sniper match? Capture the flag arena. Mm. But at the same time, I mean, Epic mixed up the idea in Unreal Tournament. Some of them were real world locations that have been converted. Some of them were, you know, intentionally artificial. Um arena type location. I'm going to grab some health out of this bastard. Actually was quite a lot of health, I'm happy with it. Now, there is There are two things to open. I really like these bats. Hmm. I mean this is this game has a strong um, theme of what we start to see a lot more of uh, as we go through or through video game history, which is just having atmosphere for its own sake. You know, using cycles, basically CPU cycles, you know, stuff we can't necessarily afford to spend in older systems, just to make the game more immersive. So there's a drop somewhere, I can't remember where it was. Um, it was over there. Make the game more immersive, uh, even though it doesn't actually add any gameplay elements. Hmm. By having those bats, you can't shoot the bats. There's no, it's not like a duck hunt sort of reward system. The bats just go by. Yeah, they just started adding flavour. Yeah, it's all flavour. Which is fine, it's great, I'm not criticising it. I'm just saying that now that we have that extra bit of... Here it is. Um, extra bit of Is that the way forward? Play. Oh, no, it's just No, I think it is. It opens up. This is the yes. other thing, of course, about these kind of games. It's like... Yeah, it opens up this. Why the fuck would that open up that? Pixel hunting. <laughs> what, that too? logic of it doesn't always entirely make sense, but, like, you'd spend an hour just walking around the level trying to find that one corner that drop for the progress. Well, one of the commenters, 42% health, was saying, when I started up, like, I can't believe we're going into this blind. I have played it before, and I played it fairly recently. My brother was around, and, you know, he told me about this, uh, Zandronum, which I'm using to play the game in the first place. I mean, we went through it and it was only because I completely forgotten how to do the first level that it took as long as it did. But we spent ages looking for that drop. Huh. Um, but I remembered about it. I knew now that I come back to this place that I had to look for an awkward to find drop and we're moving on. But we would have spent ages looking for it last time as well. This is actually back where it's already been. Well, that's where those average were, I just ignored it. Now we're back here, but this is all opened up. And there's a cave key, which scares me. Oh, that's a castle key, I think. See, anyone who's ever played a video game is going, I'm not picking that up. Yeah. Hey, Do okay, I look? Go back and look at that for a second. Look at the rock on the floor and the space above. Does that rock come out of the ceiling? Yes. And it's lit up because there's a skyline. That would have been a pillar before. Aye! Oh, These I things see. have to die fast. That's another limitation of things, of course. You can't have something that goes from being above you to being below you. Hmm. It has to become go from being a wall to being a platform. Or uh, go from being a wall to being a, a canopy or something. Like that. Which was addressed in Duke Nukem. Although, someone in the comments will no doubt enlighten me. I'm not sure, although I feel like it's not the case, that Duke Nukem actually used the Doom engine or an extension of it. I'm pretty sure Duke Nukem had its own engine. Hmm. I think you're right, for some reason. But it was. Based on that, too. No. Um, it used the same editor program, Deep, which I remember paying for and having delivered on floppy disks. <laughs> which is how I know, know so much about the engines in the first place, because I made many amateurish maps. Should we save scum this, or do I really not care? don't think there's anything to gain from getting those, because I can't get them. Like, I've got 25 and I'm not using them because I hate them. Now we can get that, but it'll squash us. Too late. <laughs> Pretty sure that's entirely a trap and there's no way of getting it. Huh. Okay, that was safe. 
there's a swamp key. Pretty cool thing. Which sounds like the uh, Mario Underground. Hmm. Can I just point out that that trope that I was expecting didn't happen? Yep. We're going to open this. Try and get in there before we get carried away by the current. I see this is cool with the green slime on Yeah, but I think this is a heretic texture straight up. It is called Hex and Beyond Heretic, and I think a lot of, well, you can tell a lot of it was borrowed from Heretic because, like, the Crystal Vials and things are identical. I think this is a secret, but I want to explore the other bit first. Like a semi-secret, I don't think it's a real secret, because the real secret doesn't tend to show up until the end of each level. Yeah. Uh, but it's a... I mean, who's that one? Ah, no, I remember. Like, it went around. I don't mean, like, as in, you've played it before, I remember it. But just backtracking and <coughs> learning the level. Because I'm completely lost. Mostly it's a case of... Well, first of all, there's a map. Mostly it's a case of... You know, elevation. So I, I went up. <laughs> I'm going up again. But I also want to check... The other way down seems to just turn up somewhere I've already been. There's another door over here. Actually, I do want to visit because I've just remembered that it had a motif on it that I believe is the key that I didn't know what to do with back in the swamp. Uh, yeah, let's not. Oh no, that's okay. Yeah, that's it. Right. Like, I really like that considering that none of this is overlapping. They didn't have the Z-axis work that we do these days. So. No, let's not waste any mana on this. Don't need the HP. Because we don't have the Z-axis ability that we used to have, that we are used to now, it's still really impressive that you can get these sort of fairly obvious what they're trying to do situations. I'm going to go this way and then this way and then the first left. Can you move when you're looking at the map? Is that yes. what you're doing? Oh, that's cool. That's right. So there's this. It's got another thing in it. I may have to use some mana here. I guess we've jumped through one of these two teleports to see where they can take us. Now that we've got the castle key as well. Is there a plot to this? That, um, that face thing that speaks to us at the start of every hub world yeah. has done. is a baddie of some description. Uh, and it has done something naughty, and we're fighting against it is the general gist here. Right. So I'm guessing this goes to Darkmere based on what it's made of. We did get the castle key, so we do want to do that. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. But it actually takes us to the one that doesn't take us back to there, so that's annoying. I don't know why it's wooden, then. Can you not go back through it? Well, if I do, it'll take me to the, to the hub world here. All oh, right. But I think that's okay. Because we've got the castle key. I think this area. If I use the arrow keys, I can move the map independently of me. Hmm. So I basically want to keep going. So it'd be nice to have a compass, actually. It's just the fact to... that, like, <clears throat> obviously, this is an old school gaming at its best where you just get a key and it doesn't tell you where that key's got to go. You're just left to figure it out. Well, you do have to explore everywhere, and then you press a thing and it says, you need the castle key. Oh, yeah. Go find that. Jumping is also something you can use to have. That. That's fucking sweet. Mm. I've never seen that before as well. That's the cool bit. So I think that takes us back to somewhere else. I think it takes us into the, the big structure in the middle. Right. We've already done that, so we might as well jump through here. That takes us here. Okay, so then we want to go back to find the other one. Which was the first one I was going to go through, but I'm glad I went back because it was the puzzle switch. Uh, uh, <laughs> this one? Yes, that was very lucky. That was an absolute guess. I just <laughs> took the correct three turns. And then we go up here. Don't really need that mixed mana to shit. Oh, now we're in Milkwood. Dark. Yeah, that looks cool. So this is um, this is episode I haven't uploaded at the time that we're recording this. Right. Um, and I go on a lot about how this frog is super cool. This is what I was talking about before. It doesn't work vertically, so the depth of the fog is permanent, irrespective of how far away it is. Right. But it works horizontally. 
and it's just um, spoilers for you. <laughs> it's uh, it's the same lighting engine, just see, uh, it's white instead of black. It looks really good. It adds like a lot of atmosphere. Yeah, in a very simple way. Like I was saying, this game uses a lot more atmosphere than like Doom before it would have. Yeah. Because I think they just had the, the stuff to spare, basically. <laughs> really expecting to be beaten up by a stalker. Right? Don't mind using the mana to get through this bit. Probably not on these items, though. There's so much more min-maxing when you're playing this on hard. How do you know the names of all the enemies? I played it when I was like 10. <laughs> oh, like, where does it tell you? Where did you find them out? I seem to remember that there was a big trend for these games when you finish them to have it in the outro, but also it tells you when you die to them. Uh -huh. So where are they? Uh, okay. Use mana. Everything I'm doing now is, uh, do I use mana for this sort of situation? Because it's been such a difficult um, resource. We only get 23 for each. 26 for each. Uh, each gold. It's not really an orb. It's a gem that you pick up. I do remember this. Actually. Guess you don't fall down there? Yeah, that seems like a problem. <laughs> Try not to. I'm even min maxing the HP, even though it's actually too. Turning out to be a. Uh, one sixth. It keeps saying that. Do you ever get like two sixths? No, there's six switches. And every single one just says one sixth. How many are you on? Don't know, but you'll see in the episode before this one uh, where they are displayed. Right. Is that it? Got to be some more of this than this. Right. Is this sort of a leap of faith situation? Mm -hmm. Mildly confused because I was expecting to be able to do more here. I guess we just jump through this and see where we end up. Uh, guess we'll do that in the next episode. Okay. Because that's about time for this episode. Thank you for watching. Hope that James's uh, conversation was both enticing and enthralling. <laughs> it does go deeper, look. Oh, oh crap. I'll cut that out and uh, <laughs> see everyone in the next episode. Thanks Thank for watching. Everybody. Say bye, James. Bye. Bye. bye.